Uh, welcome, welcome to To The Point. Uh, this is the last of, it, of four programmes on end times with Pastor Derek Walker from Oxford Bible Church. And he's going to be explaining to us another of keys of time. And this, in this case, it's the year of the Jubilee, Derek. Over to you. That's right. <laughs> yes, I've, I've written a book called The, the Keys of Time um, because there are a number of keys that really unlock the treasure chest of God's of the Bible chronology. And uh, we saw in a previous program, actually, that the first key is that God structures time according to the creation week. Now, I call it the creation principle, and where one day is a thousand years. So there's the 7,000 years of, of history. Now, the, the, now, another crucial key that represents the grace of God is the Jubilee principle. Mm. And so we need to understand the year of Jubilee and what's involved in that, because this is God measures time. And if we go to Leviticus 25, we'll see how God told Israel to measure time in sevens. And uh, in the first seven verses, he talks about the Sabbath principle. And, and we're going to see a picture in a minute, uh, number, picture number 20. And, and this Sabbath principle uh, says that they were to work the land for six years and then they were to rest on the seventh year, the, the Sabbath year. Right. And so they measured their the years in cycles of seven years. And then it goes on in the chapter to talk about the Jubilee principle. So they, they had a, se a Sabbath seven years and then another seven years and so on. And they were to measure seven sevens of years, and that would then be the Jubilee. And so in Leviticus 25, verse 8, um, and again, we'll see this illustrated in picture number 20. Leviticus 5, 25, verse 8, he says, And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself. Seven times seven years. See, seven lots of seven years. Yeah. And the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years. So we're counting seven sevens of years makes up the jubilee. Um, and here we see the picture um, where each black line shows the seven years. And so seven of these blocks of seven years takes us to 49 years. And that actually is, is what we might call a jubilee cycle of 49 years. And then we go to the next jubilee cycle. And that's the basic idea. And then it says in verse 9 that we should, uh, verse 9 says, Then, in this 49th year, it says, you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound. And, and we'll have a picture of the, the sounding of the trumpet here, uh, uh, picture 21. Um, it says, you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the 7th month. Now, Try and remember that, the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout your land. Mm -hmm. And this was the sounding of the Jubilee trumpet. And this Jubilee trumpet, the, actually Jubilee means trumpet blast. Right. That, that's what it means. It's the blasting of the trumpet uh, to declare something, to proclaim liberty throughout the land, as we're going to see. It's a right. proclamation of God's grace. Now, I'm really stupid. Explain to me <laughs> what blowing the trumpet means. <laughs> well, it's a proclamation, really, of freedom. Um, it was good news. Mm. You know, we talk about good news, the good yeah. news. Yeah. What we talk about the good news today is the fulfillment of the year of Jubilee. Well, the yeah. gospel, the good news, is actually prefigured in the Jubilee. Right. It was a declaration of God's grace. Mm. Now, basically, for example, let's say you had built up debts. Hmm. Let's say you got so bad that you had to sell yourself as a servant to someone else, a, as it were, a s hired slave to someone else. Right. You were separated from your family. You, you lost your house, all right, because of, of, of your debt. So whatever trouble you got into, on the, when you heard the Jubilee trumpet, it declared liberty. It declared your sins were forgiven. It declared your debts were forgiven. And you, could be re you, you were free from slavery. And you could go and you could return to your house, you could return to your family, your debts would be forgiven. It's all the grace of God. 
Praise God. <laughs> and, and so, for example, it says um, in verse, uh, you, every, and that this trumpet would be sounded everywhere. People would go two by two into every town, every village, blowing the trumpet and declaring, it's the year of Jubilee, it's the year mm. of Jubilee, you can go free. Mm. And uh, it says, for instance, in verse 10, you shall consecrate the 50th year. Now, we'll talk about that in a bit. And proclaim liberty, liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It's a jubilee for you, and you shall return every one of you to your own possession, to your own house. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you can reclaim your lost possessions. Mm -hmm. um, and each one return to your family. The 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. It shall be holy to you, verse 12. Verse 13, each of you shall return to his possession. So it was all the grace of God that everyone was set free, everyone was forgiven on the year of Jubilee. And it was a now message. When they heard the trumpet blast, right. they were told, you can go free now. You can claim your freedom now. You can claim your property now. Everything that was lost is re given so, back to this you. This is a really special a day. fresh new start. It was special. a wonderful day. It was a joyful day. Wonderful day. Good news. It's good news to the poor. And all your debts are forgiven on the day. Good news to the poor. <laughs> <laughs> now, explain to me, um, just from mm. understanding you, it, yes. the, the year of the Jubilee is proclaimed on the Day of Atonement. Is that that's right? right. The, that's the interesting thing, that it wasn't the 49th year, mm. and it wasn't the 50th, well, it wasn't the 49th year, mm. because it's called the 50th year. Mm -hmm. And five is the number of grace. So it's the 50th year. It's not the 49th year. Neither is it the, the, the year after the 49th year, which is the first year of the new Sabbath cycle. It's a special year. And the key is it starts halfway through the 49th year because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a special year. It's a year of grace. It's mm -hmm. a year that's holy to the Lord. And so it starts halfway through the 49th year on the Day of Atonement. Now, why does it happen on the Day of Atonement? So, yes, um, if we see in this picture here, this 50th year isn't part of the, sab the, sab the Sabbath cycles, because if it was part of that, it would disrupt the seventh Sabbath cycles. But it, there's a continuous series of Sabbath cycles. So this 50th, it's not the 49th year, it can't be, it's the 50th year, but it starts halfway through the 49th year and goes halfway through the first year of the next cycle. And we're going to talk about that later because God counts a jubilee cycle as 50 years. But to man, mm. it's a cycle of 49 years. Yeah. And that's going to be vital when we talk later on. Um, in, f in fact, uh, this, this is a very uh, crucial puzzle because what we find is in Bible chronology, if we take a day with the Lord as a thousand years, um, we would expect, say, cycles of 500 years, you know, because a day naturally breaks into two halves of five, yeah. half a day, you know, day and night. 500 years, 500 years. When we actually look at Bible chronology, we find, like in Daniel 70 weeks, we find cycles of 490 years, not 500 years. Yeah. How can we make that fit? Yeah. Well, the key is, it is 500 years, because 50 years to God is actually 49 years to man using the Jubilee principle, oh. yeah? So 500 years to God, hmm. on God's clock, yes. yeah, okay, because of the Jubilee factor is actually 490 years. <laughs> so the 490 years that man experiences, God actually adds in the Jubilee year of grace and, it, and it's 500 years. And so this explains why Israel's history is composed of 490 year cycles. Hmm. Um, Yes, very, uh, very interesting. If we look at picture 24, actually, um, uh, we'll see the kind of structure of time that a day with the Lord is a thousand years. And you can see time from Adam to Abraham is two days or 2,000 years. From Abraham to Christ, another two days or 2,000 years. And then we're in the church age now, which is about another two days, 2,000 years. And then the final day, the Sabbath day of history, the, is the thousand years of the millennium. Now, you can, if we look, we're going to focus now on the time from Abraham to Christ. Right. And it's going to be 2,000 years. But actually, that is, we're going to see that they actually com are composed of 490-year cycles because of this jubilee principle. 
um, and we'll see how that all, all works out. Um, in fact, if we look at um, picture number 25, we're going to summarize Israel's history. Now, there's more to it than, than uh, I can explain here right now. But basically, what you find is that there are, from Abraham to the Exodus, is a cycle of 490 years. I call that a great jubilee cycle. So just as individuals had a jubilee every 49 years, the nation of Israel had a jubilee every 490 years. And um, every 490 years was a national jubilee, when yeah. God did something great for the nation. Every time a jubilee happens, it's the grace of God releasing you from the past, mm. the forgiveness of the past, and then grace for the future. Mm. So we're going to look at number 25 again, and we're going to just go through those four cycles to show you what I mean. Um, first of all, Abraham is born. That's where we start it. 490 years is the Exodus. Well, what a great jubilee event the Exodus was. They were slaves in Egypt, and they were released from slavery, and God's grace and power was revealed to give them a new start as a nation. If you go forward another 490 years, you actually get to the dedication of the temple when God anointed Solomon's temple with his Holy Spirit. What a great jubilee event that was. And then if you go forward another 490 years, you get to the decree that we talked about in the last program, the decree to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. Israel, of course, had fallen into sin. They'd fallen into captivity. So here comes the jubilee event where God, as it were, forgives the past and releases them back. He restores them so they can go back and rebuild. And that's the decree of Artaxerxes there. And then, of course, the last 490 years is Daniel's 70 weeks. Yeah. which takes us to the cross, which is the jubilee of jubilees, right. you know. And um, so we see Israel's history is made up of great jubilee cycles. Yeah. And altogether, that's 1960 years to man. And of course, that in includes 40 jubilees, making the 2,000 years, making the two days. Yeah. And so God's structure of time is actually based on jubilee. It, incorp it incorporates the, this grace of God that right. is revealed. So God rules time according to his grace. He measures time in jubilee cycles and great jubilee cycles. Amazing. Derek, how long did it take you to work all this out? It's yeah. stunning. It's amazing. <laughs> have you, how long have you been studying? I've been putting stuff? the pieces together for a number of years now. I should tell you what I think you have. <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, Derek, uh, went to Oxford University, and I think your degree was in mathematics. In math, so I... I think it shows. I, I, <laughs> I enjoy that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I, quite honestly, it would, it would need someone who really understands maths to actually understand all this. I mean, it's mind-blowing. Honestly, it's just mind-blowing, Derek. The Jubilee, I believe, is the heart of the Bible, actually. It's the, right. it's the gospel message. You know, yeah. you are a Jubilee trumpeter. You're an evangelist, Richard. <laughs> and you know how to blow that Jubilee trumpet. And, and, and I believe the gospel is the fulfillment of the year of Jubilee. Right. But I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> no, no, well, carry on. Well, this is terribly interesting. So um, we've been through the 490-year cycles, haven't mm. we? Okay, um, now, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, Jesus himself brought in the Jubilee of Jubilees. That's right, right isn't it? And, and that's why I say the... Daniel's 70 weeks have to end with the death and resurrection of Christ because this was surely the greatest jubilee event of all. Yes. And just to build it up, let me just tell you what happened on the Day of Atonement. Right. Because on the Day of Atonement, the high priest, this one time a year, would make the great sin offering. And he would take the blood. And only on this day, he would take the blood into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood there into the very presence of God. And then the people would wait and see if he would appear alive, because he was not allowed to go in the Holy of Holies ordinarily. And, you know, there was a great fear that he would die, you know, mm. uh, or something. So when the priest, a uh, high priest, appeared alive again, having offered up the sacrifice, because if there was something wrong, he would surely fall dead for going into the Holy of Holies. So sure. if he appears alive again, and then he declares the sacrifice has been accepted, mm. yeah? God is satisfied with the sacrifice. Yeah. So the high priest appears alive again, and then if it's a year of jubilee, they would, the trumpeters would then, he would release the trumpeters to go throughout the land proclaiming the year of jubilee. 
And what, it, what was the proclamation? The sacrifice has been accepted, atonement's been made, it's all paid for, your forgiveness is paid for, every blessing is paid for, you are now set free. You can are set free from whatever's holding you back, for, set free from your debts, set free from your sins. You can go back and rebuild the broken down walls of your life. Mm. And that jubilee proclamation went throughout the land. So mm. what, how did Jesus fulfill it? Mm. Well, first of all, when he came preaching the gospel, every place and in Nazareth, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news mm. to the poor. Mm. That's jubilee. Yes. And in fact, he was actually quoting from Isaiah 61, right. which was a prophecy of the Messiah. And what the Messiah would, would, would make that declaration, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, restored families, mm -hmm. and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's another word for the year of Jubilee, the year of God's acceptance, the year of God's favor. Mm -hmm. It's the year. Mm -hmm. And to set the captives free, freedom. You see, and so he said, when the Messiah comes, he's going to fulfill the year of Jubilee. He's going to make the Jubilee proclam proclamation. And those who believe the message will be set free mm -hmm. and receive the grace of God. And so when Jesus stood up at Nazareth and everywhere else he went and, and he said, the spirit of the Lord's upon me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to give good news to the poor. And then he said, this day, this is fulfilled in your hearing. He was claiming to be the Messiah, and he was blowing the Jubilee trumpet. And then, of course, those who believed him received that power to heal them, to restore their lives. But then he, he still had to really make it happen for the whole mankind when he died on the cross. So he offered himself as the sin offering on the great day of atonement, on the day of the cross. And as the great high priest, he also took the blood into the heavenly holy of holies and sprinkled the blood there. Mm -hmm. And then on the third day, he appeared alive out of the holy of holies, declaring the sacrifice has been accepted. That's what the resurrection means, mm -hmm. that the sacrifice, the blood has been accepted by God. Full payment has been made. And now the grace of God is now released to all us all freely. Yeah. And so he says, the sacrifice is accepted. And then he told his disciples, go preach the gospel to all creation. Mm. What was he saying? Go preach the year of Jubilee. Mm. Absolutely. You see, yeah. Ev to, to all creation, to every village, blow the trumpet of Jubilee. Mm. Declare that sin has been forgiven. Mm. Atonement has been made. Now you can go free. You can claim all the Adam lost in the, in the fall, you can reclaim your lost possessions. Mm -hmm. You can rebuild the walls of your broken life. You can receive restoration. And that's the gospel message. Absolutely. And that's why Paul, you know, in Corinthians yes. chapter 6, he, he says, you know, uh, we, we are workers with God, he says. And then he says, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Verse 2, for he says, in an acceptable time. That's year of Jubilee talk. In the acceptable time. I have heard you. In the day of salvation, I've helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Mm. Now is the day of salvation. Jubilee was a now message. It's basically saying, it's done. The price is paid. Now you can accept the grace of God. It's, you can receive your forgiveness now. When they heard the trumpet, it meant great joy mm. because they could walk free then. They could just mm. claim their freedom. Right. right then. So Jesus fulfilled the Jubilee in his death and resurrection. He fulfilled all the elements of the Jubilee. And it wasn't just localized to Israel. It's now Jubilee for the whole human race. And we are now living, actually, now, Richard, we're living in the year of Jubilee now, right. as far as our own spiritual salvation is concerned. We're living in the year of Jubilee. We can, but it won't last forever. The opportunity only lasted for a year. If they didn't claim their freedom in the year, it would be too late. Right. And that's why Isaiah 61 goes on and says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Mm. And so those who don't receive the grace in the time of grace, they come to the end and then it's judgment. Yes. The day of vengeance of our God. So don't, w don't wait too long to receive the grace of God. So that's a warning to us, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think this is absolutely stunning stuff, actually. I think it's amazing. Now, what I'd like you to do is just tell us... Uh, I hope you're really interested in this stuff. Uh, it's very relevant...
to our lives. This is the fourth of a short series of programmes on end times. I used to talk about end times myself, but Derek's so much better than me. Uh, I thought, well, you know, why... I'm an amateur at end times. Why talk about end times when Derek's so much better at it? So I've purposely imported Derek to talk about end times. Can you tell us about your books so that people can get hold, get hold of your material? And then you talk about jubilee and evangelism. Perhaps you could talk a bit about that as well. Sure. Well, I, I've got, uh, on the year of Jubilee, I don't have a book, but I do okay. have some CD series. Okay. Um, they kind of overlap a bit, but one's called The Anointing Message. Right. And the other one's called The Year of Jubilee. And both these are sets of uh, about eight CDs right. that, that, that you can get from, by calling our office, uh, 01865 515 086. You can also find us at Oxford Bible Church. Co. UK. So th these are CDs that I've preached on this because I believe this is such a foundational understanding that the whole gospel, the mm. gospel, um, is the central message of the Bible. That's how people get into the Bible by receiving the gospel. Right. Uh, that's the entry level message, isn't it? Yeah. And and actually, where everything in the New Testament is anticipated in the Old. Right. Where is the gospel anticipated in the Old Testament? It's in the year of Jubilee. Right. And so to understand the gospel mm. and how to be a jubilee trumpeter, <laughs> we yeah. must understand the year of jubilee sure. and the wonderful grace of God. And so there's that aspect to it of how Jesus fulfilled the jubilee and how we are to be jubilee trumpeters now, making that proclamation that right. atonement is made and now you can receive the grace of God. Right. It's good news to the poor, right. to the dispossessed, because now Jesus has brought it back for you and you can reclaim what you've lost. You've, we've lost righteousness, we've lost peace, we've lost joy, we've lost health, we've lost so many things. And if we believe the Jubilee message, we can receive the power of God in our lives to, to be restored. And then understanding Jubilee also is vital, and, and this uh, is part of this book here on the keys of time, because it's also, the fact is that God used Jubilees to, to actually measure time. Time is measured in Jubilee cycles uh, and in great Jubilee cycles. And so to understand the chronology of the Bible, you have to understand Jubilee. So it's a big part of this book called The Keys of Time as well. Um, so, but, you know, we need to understand this is the message God is saying now. If I can just blow the Jubilee trumpet. Just before you do that, yes. <laughs> I, hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed these few talks with Derek. Um, on end times. He's so good and he, he is a mathematician. You need to be a mathematician to understand all this sort of stuff. <laughs> um, if you've got any questions or any comments about these programs, please write to us at info at revelationtv.com and I will pass your comments along to Derek and I'm sure he'll answer your questions. Sure. Um, but I'm just going to ask pro, uh, Derek to finish the program. We've got about another two or three minutes okay. left. Uh, just talk about blowing the trumpet. Well, I just want to speak to you here now, to, just so you know that Jesus loves you, and he died for you, and he came on the 80th Jubilee, actually, from creation, and he purchased all your forgiveness, all your restoration, and he wants me to just to declare and sound the Jubilee trumpet to you right now. And I want to tell you that Jesus has paid for the forgiveness of all your sins. He's paid for every blessing that you need in your life, for the power of God in your life to restore you, to restore what you have lost through the fall of man, that God wants to restore every good thing back to your life. And I de declare the Jubilee to you right now. I declare liberty. You can go free from whatever's holding you back. You can go free. Just believe the Jubilee message. Believe that God, when he says it's the Jubilee time, to, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. If you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, do it now because his grace is here for you now. You can't earn or deserve it, but just believe and receive his forgiveness. Ask him to come into your heart. If you need healing, the Jubilee message is Jesus has died for your sins and for your sicknesses and for your griefs and your sorrows and your heartaches and just receive him right now and receive his power to heal you, heal your heart and heal your body and set you free because Jesus has done it all for you. 
And I proclaim to you that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me now. He's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Wherever, what's ever poor and lacking in your life, there's good news for you that the power of God is here right now to set you free. Just believe and receive the power of God. It is Jubilee time now, and you can go free and enjoy your liberty. Praise God. Bless you. Bless you, Derek, and thanks for joining us on To The Point. I hope you've enjoyed this series of four programs with Derek. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been great to have you. Thank and please you. come again soon. God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. <laughs>